If you want to create this really cool button effect inside of Framer, you've come to the right place. In this video, our friend Nandy from Framing University is going to give you an exclusive tutorial on how you can do that in minutes. This content is from our recent conference, Front Row 2024, which was a live event that we hosted here on YouTube for Framer creators. Let's go. So as you can see, as I hover this button, it has this nice animation. Here's the original uh, concept by Joe Taylor. I found it on Dribbble, but yeah, we're going to be recreating this in Framer without any code, with components and interactions. When I start doing something in Framer, first of all, I usually just place every single element on the canvas that I'm going to use. So in this case, if we go back here, you can see that we have a text layer, we have a line under the text, and then we have a little circle on the left side. That's the third element. But we have a fourth element as well, which is the little icon within the circle. So before I do anything else, I just place these elements on the canvas. So I hit T on my keyboard and I write out the text, start using Framer. This is a really important message, by the way. If you don't use Framer yet, you should start using it. So start using Framer, Satoshi will be the font, and it will be bold, the color will be white. Yeah, I think that's it. Start using Framer, okay. Now we have the text, but what I also like uh, doing is I usually rename every single layer on my, on my layers panel, so this will be called label. I like doing this because I want to make sure that whenever I look at my layers panel, I know what's going on. So, okay, now we have the label. Now we can actually do the line. So I will just place a line here. The height will be one pixel. And by the way, this is just a frame and I will rename this to line. Uh, the width is not really important now, but the fill color is important. It's going to be great. And as you can see, I'm not really um, bothered with positioning. I'm just placing these elements on the canvas. And after I have everything, then I can I can wrap them in different containers and stacks to, to, to create the proper layout. So the next thing will be a circle. So I'm hitting F on my keyboard and drawing the circle here. It will be 28 pixels width and height. I'm going to rename this to circle. I'm going to rename this to circle. Yes. And the border radius will be 100. It will be fully rounded. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring over an icon from Figma. So let me open Figma here. As you can see, I have this little icon here, which is from the central icon pack, by the way, which is the best icon pack, in my opinion. Um, but how do I bring these icons into Framer? So I could just export them as SVGs and you know, uh, drag and drop these SVG files to Framer. But a much easier solution is just right-clicking here, copy, paste S, and here we have copy SVG. So now the SVG is on our clipboard, so we can go into Framer and click the circle and press Command and V. And now we have it. I'm gonna rename this to SVG and the size will be 16 pixels. So 16 pixel width and 16 pixel height. Then I'm gonna make sure that it is centered. We have a shortcut for that as well, which is option H for horizontal alignment to the center and option V for vertical alignment to the center. Now it is perfectly centered. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to press Command and Enter my keyboard. This is a shortcut for wrapping uh, a layer into a frame. Now, as you can see, we have frame, and within the frame, we have the SVG icon. I'm going to rename the frame to icon. And so now what we have is a circle frame. Within the circle frame, we have the icon. And within that icon, we have the SVG. This icon is absolutely positioned, and the nature of absolutely positioning is that you can place the element anywhere within its parent container. 
So now I'm just pressing the arrows on my keyboard and I can move it anywhere. So where I'm going to move it is basically to the left. And if I uh, actually activate this left pin and set it to minus 16, that will basically mean that it will completely uh, be out of the view to the left. And we are actually activating the left pin because that will basically mean that it will always try to keep that distance from the left. Uh, this is good for us because, for example, if we resize this circle now and check the icon's position, you can see that it is still there. So it is really cool. So the starting state of the circle will be a bit different. It's going to be a little bit smaller. If we take a look at here at arc, you can see it's, it's pretty small. So we're going to make it small, 8 pixels. And then we're going to set the fill color to 0% white. And then we're going to have a border color, which will be white, and 60% transparency. OK, I think that looks great. And if you look at this right now, we have everything on our canvas. We have the circle. We have the icon within the circle. We have the label and we have the line. So now we can start positioning these. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to position the text and the line right below each other. So let's do that. I'm selecting the label and the line. And the shortcut that I'm going to use here is Option, Command, and Enter, which is wrapping these two layers within a stack. When we are wrapping something into a stack, we have these um, properties on the right panel. And we can adjust these to get the, get the proper layout. So in order to have these right below each other, we are going to use vertical direction. And now these are right below each other. We cannot see it because it is cutting off. And the reason for that is because the width and the height of the stack is fixed. So we're going to set it to fit content. So it now fits the content within itself. I'm going to also rename this stack to label plus line. Label plus plus, label plus line. So label plus line, because we have the label and the line within this stack. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the line and set it to fill. Fill is a really nice responsive uh, width type. And it is good because if we, for example, write something else here, so, so you can see that now the line is resizing with the text. So it's very useful. I'm going to also make sure to set the label plus line stack. And we're going to uh, decrease this gap to 8 pixels, just to have a little bit um, smaller space between the text and the line. OK, so now we have this. But what we need to do is to have this circle aligned to the center of the text, as you can see. So in order to do that, we have to wrap the label within a stack and then place the circle within that stack. So label, I'm selecting the label hitting Option, Command, and Enter to wrap it in a stack. I'm going to rename it to Label plus Circle. And now I can just click the circle here, press Command and X. This will cut it. Uh, so now it's on my clipboard. And what I can do is I can just press Label plus Circle and hit Command and V to paste it in. Now, as you can see, it's on the right side. But you know it's a stack, so it's very easy to reorder elements. I can just press the left arrow key, and now it's in the beginning. So pretty nice. OK, uh, maybe I can just re, uh, just decrease the gap here again to 8 pixels, so we have a little bit uh, less space between the circle and the text. And um, what I also notice here is that the line should start here at the text. So I'm going to actually wrap this line within a uh, stack again. So Option, Command, Enter, rename this to Line Wrapper. What I can do here is I can just simply set 
a left padding. So as you can see, I'm, as I'm uh, setting the left padding, the line is uh, getting pushed to the right a little bit. So maybe we can have 16 pixels. That looks good. So uh, what we need to do right now is we need to wrap these within a component, but I'm going to drink really quickly now. So how do we wrap or turn this um, into a component? We just click Option, Command, and K on our keyboard, and we can now set a name here. Let's say, Ink Button Animation. Ooh, hey. So now we see the component canvas where we can add different um, variants to this component. So the first variant is a primary variant that is uh, right here on our canvas. We can rename this to default. What we can do is we can press this variant button. Now a new variant is placed on the canvas. And what we can do here is we can just adjust some of the things that we want and uh, to change here on the hover variant because this will be called hover. And Framer will smartly animate in those variants. So what are the changes? If I hover this, you can see that the line goes to the right. And then also the circle gets bigger. It has now a fill color and the icon comes to the center. So let's do these things. Circle gets bigger, so 28. Here comes a little issue. As I'm making this circle a little bit bigger, you can see that its parent container's height is changing. And I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it back to 8 pixels. I'm going to go back to the primary variant and make sure that the label plus circle has a fixed height. So even though the content within this will be bigger, it will stay fixed height. So now if I make it 28, you can see that the height is not changing. But now it is cutting off because we need to now set some of these overflows to visible. So circle and label overflow visible and also the main default primary uh, variants overflow to visible. Cool. Now we have this. Also, we're going to increase the gap here just a little bit to 12 and then have the transparency back on 100. And the icon comes to the uh, center. You already know the shortcut option H and option V. It is now centered really good. I can also remove or deselect the left pin because we no longer need that on this variant. OK, next thing that we need to do is we need to adjust these lines a bit. So I'm going to set it to fixed width and I'm going to decrease it. But as you can see, as I'm decreasing the size of this line, it is staying in the center, which is not so good because as you can see, it needs to go to the right. So how are we fixing this? As you remember, we wrapped it in a stack, which is called line wrapper. Well, we need to change some of the properties here and it will be the distribute because it now set to center and that's why it is staying in the center. Um, so we're gonna just uh, set it to end. And now as you can see, it immediately jumped to the right side, which is exactly what we want. So the line will be one pixel width and we will also change it to absolute positioning and the right pin will be minus one. So now it is completely disappeared to the right. Um, yeah, I think this is the hover state. Now we can actually connect these with interactions. And as I said previously, Framer will smartly animate between these states. So hitting L on my keyboard and then connecting it to hover, the uh, trigger will be mouse enter. So what we're seeing here is that when we, uh, when our mouse enters the default variant, it needs to change to the hover variant. Uh, now I'm going to click the hover variant. As you can see, it already has a, an interaction here, which is 
the same interaction mouse enter and goes to the hover variant. It is because every single thing that we do on the primary variant will be uh, will be applied to all the uh, all the other variants as well. So we can just remove this from here and then hit uh, L on our keyboard again and connect it back to the default. But here we will have mouse leave because when we leave this uh, hover variant, we need to go back to the default variant. So now what we can do is we can actually preview this with this little button here in the top right corner. And as I'm hovering this, as you can see, the animation works perfectly. We're going to do a couple of fixes here just really quickly because I don't really like when I can select text on the interactive elements, so we're going to fix that. And we're going to also show a pointer cursor when we hover over this little button. So going back into the component, selecting the text, adding a style of user select and setting it to none, um, this will basically prevent us from you know, selecting text. And then selecting the default primary breakpoint, clicking cursor, web cursor, pointer. Now if I go back here and preview it again, you can see as I'm hovering it, we see the pointer cursor. And if I'm clicking really, really fast, I cannot select the text, which is uh, really cool. So now we have this like button uh, animation. Just one more or just a couple things that I want to mention here. Uh, if I go into the component, um, I can actually uh, add a link to it and create a variable for that. Variables are great because then we can come here to the main canvas and look on the right panel and we have these component properties here so we can link it to anywhere basically. And if you want to have multiple of these uh, um, components, these buttons, and we want to have different text on each, we can also create a, um, a variable for the text. So we go into the components, select the text, content, create variable, plain text. We can name the variable here, so maybe label. We go back to the main uh, canvas, and we have this label uh, property here now, so we can just write anything here. As you can see, now we have two of the same component, but still they have different content. And because we set it up in a way that is responsive, we can you know, change the text, the line will automatically adapt, and both will work perfectly. Good. So if you want to remix this, you can go to button-link-animation dot learnfirmware.site. If you want more content like this, consider subscribing to the channel because we're putting out more Framer content every single week in 2024. And if you want to check out more clips from our Front Row 2024 conference, check the link down below. Until next time, I'll catch you later.